Hi, I'm Anthony Massiello, and there were a series of events that happened in my life that made me realize I really needed to change. Back in 2005, while my wife was pregnant with our second son, I was denied a 20-year term life insurance policy. I was denied the policy because I was obese, I weighed 360 pounds, I had a 54-inch waist, I was on medication for high blood pressure, I was diagnosed with sleep apnea, I had eczema on my fingers, I had high cholesterol, and this company, whose whole existence is based on being able to predict life expectancy, didn't expect me to live another 20 years. I couldn't get a 20-year term life insurance policy, and I was 33 years old. The biggest thing that that did for me was it forced me to take a really close look at my life. You know, what, what was really going on? Having a company who basically doesn't know me from anyone, they just plug in my data, and the answer comes out the other end, and it just says no. So having that kind of objective assessment and telling me I wasn't going to make it in 20 years, it scared me. It scared me bad. And then when I looked at my life, there were a lot of things that were good about it. I'm mean, here, I am married. My wife and I are starting a family. I had a job that I was very happy with. We had bought a home. All these things were going good. But when I really got down to it, there were a lot of things that were really tough too. Little things like not being able to weigh myself on a bathroom scale. Some things that were a little more publicly embarrassing like walking down the aisle of an airplane to take a flight and having all eyes on me as I'm coming down the aisle, anyone with an empty seat next to them, wondering if I was gonna sit next to them. And then even when I did get to my seat and I sat down, the seatbelt wouldn't fit. So I used to have to wait until after the flight attendant did their demonstration, and I would call the flight attendant over and ask if I could use the demonstration belt just to extend my seatbelt, because they won't take off until everyone has their seatbelt uh, fastened on the airplane. But the real killer for me was one time when my wife and son and I, my 18-month-old son, my pregnant wife, we were at the local carnival that came to town. It's just one of these pop-ups that they set up in a church parking lot. But for us as new parents, it was fascinating to bring our child there at 18 months old. He started kind of paying attention to what's going on around him and he, could, he would get excited about things. And he saw this Thomas the Train ride. And and when we came around the corner and he saw that train, he, he lit up and he started wiggling and pointing because that's about what he could do, making some noises. He wanted to go on the train. And I was walking with him. I was holding him here on my chest and we were walking around and I was like, oh, this is cool. He wants to go on the train. So we walk over and we get close to the train and I put my, my fingers under his arms and I go to pull him away from me to hand him to my wife. And he grabbed onto my shirt and it's like he didn't want to let go. So, I think he wanted me to take him on the train, but there's no way I'm going to fit on a kiddie ride. In fact, I couldn't fit on an adult airplane. I couldn't fit on adult rides. You know, how am I going to get on this little miniature train that's designed for kids to ride by themselves most of the time when they're of age? So it, didn't, it wasn't a long struggle, but it stuck with me. And I handed them to my wife and she gave him the tickets and she goes on to the train ride. And then I'm standing there with a smile, watching, and my son is as excited as ever. And then the attendant told me I had to move around to the side to stand behind the gate. And I walked over there, and I stood there, literally behind a metal gate, and I watched. And while I was watching them go around, have a great time on this train ride, I just thought to myself, is this the kind of father that I'm going to be? And is this the kind of husband that I'm going to be for my wife? And, and that was it. That sealed the deal for me. I had to change. I had to get healthy. Losing weight would, was an important part of it, but not, with that, not being denied that life insurance policy. I had to get healthy. The problem is, I'm 33 years old. I was overweight my whole life. I didn't know how to be healthy. So I just had to search. Um, I set a New Year's resolution. This was in October. I gave myself some time, as we do. Um, by the end of the year, I was really ready. All of these things added up. You know, the quiet times alone that I would spend thinking, it wouldn't stop. It was like haunting me. I had to do something. 
So I set a New Year's resolution to lose 50 pounds in the year of 2006. And I didn't know how I was gonna do it. But I gave up sweets and I gave up soda and I committed to losing, losing those 50 pounds. The only way I knew how to lose weight was to keep myself hungry. So January came, I stuck with it. I kept myself hungry. I didn't have any sweets, I didn't have any more soda. And then after about three months, I weighed myself and I had absolutely nothing to show for it. I had not lost a single pound. And uh, that was tough. It's, it's hard when you're trying and you're putting in effort like that and you're, and you're not seeing anything. But luckily for me, it was, more, it was the most important thing to me in my life. So I went searching, I continued searching on the internet and I found Dr. Furman's book, Eat to Live. And the biggest thing that that did for me, the reason why I clicked by and I bought that book was I scrolled down and I saw all the comments and people were talking about this is how you get healthy. They weren't talking about how to lose weight. There were a lot of fad diets and things that I, I've tried before and I lost weight for a little while and the weight always comes back. But this one seemed permanent to me. Everyone was talking about you get healthy, even Dr. Furman was talking about it, you get healthy and the weight comes off. And that's what I wanted because for the first time in my life, I wasn't out to lose weight, I was out to get healthy. I was determined that I was gonna be able to get that life insurance policy or else, yeah, I would have to worry, you know, just a little bit, like what, if something happens to me, is my family gonna be okay? I, I wasn't prepared to live life like that. I bought Dr. Furman's book, it arrived, I started right away, and I literally started doing exactly what he said. And two months later, when we brought my son home from the hospital, uh, after he was born, I lost 30 pounds in those first two months. And that set me off like a rocket ship. Like, that's it, that's all, all the motivation I needed to continue and to know that this was right for me. So I continued, uh, the weight loss averaged out, I ended up losing about eight pounds a month, and by December of that year, when I had that goal to lose 50 pounds, I was down 90 pounds. I was off my blood pressure medicine, I couldn't remember the last time I had a migraine headache, which I used to get weekly, and I was feeling better than ever. I was like, I was so, happy with myself, I was so proud of myself, and physically, my body was working better than it had for as long as I can remember, even from childhood. At the end of the year, after losing 90 pounds, completely blowing away my goal of losing 50 pounds for the year, I literally was on fire. I had no idea that I could feel this good, and I was just motivated to continue. And I was, at that point, I was eating vegetables, fruits, beans, some nuts and seeds, and almost nothing else. And I was losing weight at almost exactly eight pounds a month every month. And it was the end of the year again, so I wanted to set another resolution for myself. Growing up, I was always relatively active. I rode bicycles, I roller skated when I was really young, I snowboarded and skateboarded, but I never ever exercised. And I never played sports. So. But, and my wife was a runner. She's always been a runner. I used to drive her to races and, and kind of watch her at different points. And I decided that now was gonna be my turn. I was gonna start running. So even though I was down 90 pounds and I was just gonna start with a combination of walking and running. Up until that point, I had not lost, I had not done an ounce of exercise. We were home, we were busy, we had the uh, newborn and a toddler full-time job, long commute, you know, the, the whole thing. So uh, there wasn't a lot of time, but I was ready to carve that out with my new body. I kind of wanted to try out, like, what can this thing do? And um, we had a treadmill. When my wife bought a treadmill, uh, I insisted that she get an extra heavy-duty one. We actually ended up buying a commercial treadmill for our house about four years earlier with the hopes that at least if we have one in the house, I can use it if I get on it. I had never been on it. But she showed me how to work it, and I started, I, I vowed to go for a half hour uh, a day. That was my New Year's resolution. A half hour a day, learn how to run. So I would start walking on there, and then I would start running. And realistically, I could run for about 30 to 40 seconds. Then I was huffing and puffing like crazy, and I slowed it down and I walked. But I did that for the whole half hour. And then slowly, 
I started just pausing less and I could just run a little bit further and a little bit further until then I could run a mile. And that was another means for like celebration. And then it started going quick. Then I could run a mile and a half. And now I'm doing my 30 minutes on the treadmill and I'm only taking one break. I'm doing a mile and a half. I take a walk break, settle down, and then I would go another mile and a half. And I just thought it was the coolest. And then I joined a running club and I signed up to run my first 5K race in March of that year. And I realized looking back, it's the first time I ever wore a number on my body. Like, again, not playing any sports, but the best thing for me was I was off the sidelines. I was in the activity. I'm used to driving to races and my wife goes and she runs over here and gets a bib. She runs over here, she gets a drink of water, she goes use the bathroom, she drops her stuff to me or we put it in the car. And like, it's like a swarm of bees all moving around in different directions. But now instead of being someone standing there holding stuff, now I was actually one of these people. I was like, I'm in this. And I ran that first 5K and at the finish line, I was so psyched. I knew that this was my new life. My new life included eating an extremely healthy nutritarian diet and regular exercise or regular running. And I just continued for the rest of the year. My half hour got longer on the treadmill. By the time I could run the whole half hour, I just kept extending it. And in September of that same year, two things happened. First, I ran my first half marathon, the Philadelphia distance run it was called at the time. And I ran the half marathon in an hour and 47 minutes. That's just about an eight minute per mile pace, which completely blew me away. At only nine months earlier, I, wouldn't, I wasn't able to run for one minute. And now I ran for an hour and 47 of them in a row at a, at a pretty good clip. So, uh, that was amazing. And then the second thing that happened is my weight loss stopped and it stopped just as suddenly as it began. The end of August, I weighed 197 pounds. The end of September, I weighed 197 pounds. The end of October, I weighed 197 pounds. And it's exactly what Dr. Furman describes in his book. He says, you, your weight loss will drop. You're, and then when you find your ideal weight, your body levels out. And I read the book and I was like, oh, sure it does. And, and that's exactly how it happened for me. And even though I was exercising and running all that, I just continued to lose eight pounds a month. It was like, the mo it was, it's the most foreign thing to me that I can ever imagine. And as I sit here today, I'm about 203 pounds. That's 12 years, almost 12 years later. My body weight doesn't change. I have shirts that I've been wearing now for 10 years and my wife is telling me to get rid of them because I never had a shirt that I could wear more than a year, whether I, whether I was growing big or, or shrinking down or something. Like it's, it's completely foreign to me to basically not have to worry about my weight. And the reason I care about weight loss is really only because what it means has happened on the inside. And what happened on the inside by the, by the time I was done, so I lost 160 pounds in 20 months. I got off my blood pressure medicine in probably the first three or four months. Uh, my migraine headaches disappeared. I had eczema on my, on my fingers that I've had since I was a kid. I used to get creams and, and cotton gloves that I had to sleep in. I, I didn't even associate it with what I was eating, but that disappeared. I had psoriasis behind my neck behind my ears, on, on the back of my neck, gone. Sleep apnea disappeared. And I was able to go get that life insurance policy just two years after I applied the first time and they gave it to me in the preferred category. The same exact company, the same computer. They, they plugged in my numbers and they say, hey, this guy's gonna go forever. We, we won't hurt him too bad. We'll just take a little bit of money from him every month <laughs> instead of taking a lot of money. And I was really impressed with that because they didn't, I guess I, was, I felt so healthy, at least this is what I'm telling myself, that they didn't even need to see medical history. They didn't need to know that I was gonna keep it off for two years. And the fact that they just issued it to me gave me a sense that they have confidence in me, that, that this, is, this is my new me, like I'm doing pretty well. So yeah, and, and that's, that's just where I've been. I am excited about life. I became excited about life. I love being an active dad. When I play with my kids, I got to play with them, especially growing up, the way they wanted me to play with them. I wasn't the guy who would play basketball and as the ball goes rolling down the hill, I didn't stop and take a breather and be like, you know, and, and huff and puff. I would run after the ball 
and when we hit the grass, it was, it was no holds barred. My kids were trying to trip me and knock me down so that they could get it to me before them. And really, being that kind of an active father, really being able to participate and, and with my children as they were growing up, and being that kind of husband for my wife, like that's the stuff that means the world to me. It's, yeah, my life is nothing short of amazing right now. When I met John, it was really cool because I actually didn't know much about the backstory when I, when I met John. And I was like, oh, this is, this is the guy I'm gonna you know, be hanging out here at the Eat to Live retreat for a little while. And you know, I, I look forward to getting to know him. He's another plant-based guy. He's happy, he's driven, motivated, very busy, all these things that, that I, you know, the, the kind of people I like to hang out with. And then he was showing the trailer to iThrive. And I saw him and I was like, wait, that was me. You know, I think we were probably similar, similar in size when we started. And really to see that he was about eight months into his journey and looking like he's in great shape, he's like kind of done, is it, it's just another reminder that this really works. And, and I don't have to have John tell me what he's doing because I just see what he's doing. You know when somebody's doing this or not. You know, unfortunately, you can tell when it doesn't work for somebody, when it's not working for somebody, but the reason why it's not working for them is because they, they didn't do it. One of the most difficult things for me is to see people who are really trying, but they've got it a little bit wrong, and they're not getting the results. It, it hurts, because I know how much work that is. It's like my first three months when I didn't know what to do, and I wasn't getting any results. But anyway, you know, seeing John and, and that the fact that he just knocked it right out of the park in these eight months was really, it, I mean, it's impressive. It's also kind of expected. It's, it's kind of what happens. So I knew right away that, that we clicked. You know, we, we know each other. And I'm very fortunate to know other people who have done the same for themselves. And what happens is, it was, we're the kind of people now we can finish each other's sentences. We just get it, you know. And the other thing is, I see an appreciation for for life in people who have done this for themselves. Because really, it, it's a really interesting thing. You can't outsource this. No one else can do it for you. Everyone has to do this for themselves. And there's something that comes along with that. The growth that it takes from going to someone who, in my case, I'm only gonna speak for myself, was kind of going through the motions thinking that I was on a track that led this direction to picking it up, building my own new track and going wherever I want to go. There's something, there's some growth that happens with people. And like I said, the appreciation for life, the appreciation for the other people, and then the desire to want to help other people. It's really incredible. And it's definitely the kind of people I want to hang out with. So super happy I met John, super happy I, I got to see his before and get a little bit shocked and surprised by that. So for people who are getting started, and maybe they're wondering if they can do this, or if you're wondering if this could even work for you, I want to first say, yes, you can. And truthfully, if I could come out there and flip a switch that would make you believe that for yourself, I would love to do that for you, but I can't. So things like this, taking the time to watch and learn and see what other people have done, I hope that's flipping your switch because it all starts with making the decision. You have to make a decision that you're not happy with the way things are going and that you are gonna change and that you're gonna change yourself. So once you flip that switch and you make the decision to go, you're on the right path. Plant-based whole foods diet, nutritarian diet, whatever you wanna call it, a really healthy vegan diet works for everyone. The thing is, you just have to be determined to figure out how to make it work for you. It, I mean, it works for everyone, but you have to figure out how to build it into your life. And that's the thing that's very individual. So you wanna get help, you wanna learn from others, you need to convince yourself so that you can believe how to make it happen. The things I wanna say is in the beginning, it's difficult. Um, eating a whole food plant-based diet is not difficult at all. It's very easy, but changing that period of time where you're making the change is really, really hard. So you want to continue to reinforce the things you're learning, 
um, before you start, you kind of want to wipe your slate. I would say, forget all the things that you think you know, and let's start over. Open your mind, start over, start learning, and just start learning and doing, and do it by the book. Don't change it to say, oh, well, I can still do a little bit of this or a little bit of that, because it doesn't work that way. It really works for everyone who just goes in with two feet. So let it be hard while you're doing that, but stay on path and it will start to get easier. And I know it's really hard for me to convince anyone that it's going to get easier, especially if you've already tried this. But I kind of equate it to parents. Like parents who, who've had children, they know, you, you know a family is pregnant or a couple is pregnant and then for nine months everyone's telling you what you're going to expect or what it's going to be like. So I know what I'm doing right now it probably can't compute, but when, you, when everyone's telling you what to do, you're like, I got this, I got it all figured out, you know, I know actually how it's gonna work and I kind of know what to expect. And then you come home from the hospital with that baby on the first night and everything you think you knew is completely out the window because the, the baby's not following your plan. The baby's not following your rules. So uh, while as much as I try, as much as John tries, as much as all these other people will try to help you understand, the best way to do it is to experience it for yourself. So as you transition, work, your, you know, work through the process. If your situation is bad, convince yourself it's really bad. Convince yourself you're at a rock bottom moment. If your situation isn't so bad, still convince yourself that you're at a really tough spot. Because rock bottom is not like a destination. Rock bottom is the point in time that you decide to turn your life around. You can't see rock bottom when you're on your way down. You only see rock bottom when you're on your way back up and you look back. You're like, that's the point where I decided to make the change. So convince yourself of that. Make sure it's important to you. Find a really strong purpose for making your change and then just do it and let the process unfold. Everyone, everyone I've met who has done that has been so happy that they did. And my favorite question that I'll have a, that actually is my, my friend Susan gets, like we get our opportunities to share our stories together sometimes. And whenever someone says, but how do you deal with having to give up cake? Or what do you, you know, but you had to give up wine or you, you had to give up cheese. You know, what, how do you feel about having to give up that? And I just point to Susan because she has no, problem. She's like, oh, all I had to give up. Yeah, like not being able to fit in the airplane seat. Yeah, that wasn't that tough to give up. I'm actually kind of fine with that. And, and what happens is, is the way you think about it, we gain so much more than we ever give up. It's not that I'm trying to discount people asking those questions. I think it's an important question to ask. And it's important to show the different frame of mind. It's not about deprivation. This is not about not enjoying yourself. It's we enjoy ourselves in different ways now. We enjoy ourselves through experience and through connections with people and through helping people and through, through enjoying all the things that we did as you know, big overweight people or unhealthy people, except now they're better. Like they're all better. Everything is much more enjoyable now. So, so it, it's all natural. I'm not trying to discourage, discourage anyone or tell anyone that they shouldn't be thinking what they're, what they're thinking, but I do want them to know that it gets even better. Like you can't imagine, just like bringing home that baby, you can't imagine how much you're going to love that baby. You can't imagine how insane it's going to be when that baby doesn't go to sleep or, or, you know, or when you can't understand what they're doing when they're crying, but you don't know why. It's the same thing with this. You can't understand until you get there. So just trust the process, open your mind and stay super determined and focused. And then as you go, it just becomes easier and easier. The things that you start doing repeatedly start to become habits. They start to become automatic behaviors and they start to take less effort. And then you get to the point where you're basically just living a normal life, but it happens to be very normal, very healthy and, uh, and enjoyable life. Hey Anthony, thanks for sharing your story. Really appreciate it. It's, uh, these kind of stories that inspire other people. It's what inspired me to change, you know, that I believe that I could change. And it's amazing. You lost 160 pounds, right? Yep. That's amazing. That, that's, Thank you. That's a long way to go. I'm uh, about 105. 
You look great. But uh, I think I'm pretty much uh, maybe pretty close to done. Yeah. And now I'm, I'm kind of kind of feel a little skinny, you know. <laughs> exactly. I want to put some muscle bulk up back. a little I bit. Bulk up yeah. a little bit. Hit the gym. Cool. But uh, you know, just some parting advice. I want to just reemphasize the community and the connection part of of your of your journey too. You know, because for me it was a big deal. Yeah. And my success was to make sure I connected and I got support. Yeah. From from people, you know, like yeah. like for you, tell me like. For me, it was actually tough. We didn't have social media when I started. But what I did, I did the exact same thing. I went on to Dr. Furman's website and I read the success stories over and over and over again. There was no one there to talk back to so me. Just like people but, like you. Yeah, and, and I read them and, and they brought me inspiration every single time. The other thing I did was I, instead of having conversations with people, I read the frequently asked questions in the back of his book. Every time I had a, you know, just a spare few minutes, I would just read one. You know, what's a question has someone had and what's an answer? And it's really exactly the same kind of thing that we get now from online communities and things like that, except now you're talking to a live person that you can actually change the questions if you want, instead of just reading and answering the canned questions that were included in that. That helps. Yeah. That helps. Yeah. All so right, man. Thanks, thanks a lot thanks for the opportunity. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And I, I hope it helps people. Yeah, I hope. it will. It definitely yeah. will. It will help Good. me. Here, let's take a picture. Yeah. 